Hi, everyone, and welcome to our exclusive Miami Film Festival Q&A for the film The Saint of the Impossible, which is a competitor for the Jordan Wrestler First Feature Award. My name is Lauren Cohen, and I'm the co-director of programming here at the festival, and I'm joined today by the director of the film, Mark Wilkins. But before we start the Q&A, I'd like to introduce Miles Dixon from the Young Arts National Foundation. He helped program The Saint of the Impossible, so I'd like to turn the floor over to him to tell us briefly why he selected this film. Hi. Hello, Mark. Hi, Lauren. Um, this is an incredible film. I've seen it twice now. Um, it's a it's a heartbreaking and really beautiful story about an undocumented um, family from Peru, a mother and her two twin boys, and their journey just trying to live and survive in Trump era New York. Um, the mother gets convinced by a sneaky Swiss man to open a Mexican burrito shop, even though their family isn't even Mexican. And the two boys develop a relationship with a Croatian girl that they meet in a, a class to learn English. <clears throat> and it just kind of follows um, a journey of exploitation and identity and love and family. And what really struck me about the film was just how much I connected to it, how down to earth and relatable it was, a lot of its themes and how real its characters felt and how universal a lot of the emotions and just things that were in the story. Um, and that struck me because I'm a privileged Caucasian male with lots of opportunity and pretty easy, simple life as of now on the West Coast. And so I thought, you know, this could really speak to so many people. Um, I don't know who can actually really relate to the literal things going on in the film, as well as just, I mean, I don't know, it, it, uh, it really spoke to me and I think it's extremely important and I think it could speak to millions of people. So anyway, it's, I'm super honored to introduce this film and it's just a great movie. It's a really well told, well told story and I will yeah. be quiet now, but it's very amazing. Thank you very much, Miles. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm incredibly moved, you know, to hear you reflecting on the film. It's a, it's a North American premiere. So it's, it's very, uh, the, the film is in a way very fresh, very young. Um, and, and it's one of the first mo times, you know, that, I, that I hear somebody reflecting on a story, um, I, I worked on for, for eight years. Wow. So very touching for me. And it's a big honor to be invited to the Miami Film Festival. Thank you for selecting the film. Mm -hmm. And maybe one little detail, which is interesting that in, uh, I think it's six years ago, I was at the Miami Film Festival at the co-producers workshop, introducing the film. Um, <laughs> wow. when it was in, I, was, I was searching for a producer. Um, I couldn't find my producer in Miami, but it's beautiful to come back now with the finished film after one of the first steps um, happened in Miami. Yeah, well, um, Miles, you summed up the film so beautifully. Um, and uh, thank you for being here, uh, Mark. It's a, it's a really great film. So I wanted to ask you, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this film and uh, what drew you to the story? It was um, uh, actually a coincidence that the story came towards me. I wasn't looking for um, this kind of story. I would just move to New York. I, um, I, I had this, exactly this feeling, you know, uh, white, middle-aged, Caucasian in New York, everything is possible. I was fascinated by this city of opportunities. And, and after a few years, I started to understand that, that there is a second layer. There's something else going on here. And there's something happening behind the curtain. It's not as, as romantic as it is, the, the idea of the American dream. And then a friend actually in Berlin gave me this book. It's a Mark here. It's one of the best books I read in a while. And maybe you'd like to read it. And I started to read it without having any, any, uh, any plans to discover my first film. But I think after the second page, I felt so connected to those two boys um, and their story and the way they see New York and, and what kind of role New York and the American dream plays in this book that I realized this is my first film. This is the story I want to make. 
Wow, that's incredible. And I mean, the characters in this film, you mentioned the two boys, all the characters are so vibrant and well fleshed out. And I think specifically, I was really impressed with the casting of the Croatian girl, Kristen. I think she really gives off that vibe of that, like a uh, seduction and mystery. So I wanted to ask you about the casting process and how you uh, discovered all the actors, but uh, Kristen's uh, character specifically. The very first one um, we cast was Magali Solier, who plays the, the mother of the mm -hmm. two um, boys. Uh, Magali is uh, probably one of the greatest uh, South American um, indie art house um, actress, actresses. Um, she, I saw her the first time in, in uh, The Milk of Sorrow, um, a film by Claudia Loasa, which, which uh, won a Berlinale. And I was so intrigued by her performance and her screen energy that as soon as I made this decision, and I, I, you know, I wanna, I wanna turn this novel into a movie. I traveled to Peru. I managed to meet her, and she came on board immediately. She liked my vision of the story, the story itself. But then it was very difficult to find the boys, and we started to look around in New York, um, uh, then in in, uh, in in Miami, and and in in uh, Los Angeles. I wanted two boys which have a certain naivety and innocence, and and, and uh, a dreamlike insecurity. But but um, I just I just couldn't find those characters. Everybody who came to the casting was somehow cool and very present, and didn't have this dream dreaminess. So um, we, we um, were casting in Peru. We were looking for them in Peru and found them in Cusco, a, a big city up in the mountains. And the, um, Adriano and Marcello have never been acting before. They are, um, you know, they were 16 when, when, I, when I met them. Um, they were 18 when we shot the film and they took acting classes um, and then had the courage, you know, to just drop everything and to come to New York and sh film the story with us. Wow. That's incredible. I can't believe this is their, their first film. They really are, do such a great job. Um, Miles, do you want to ask a couple questions? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was blown away by all the performances. And especially, I thought that the, the two boys playing Paul and Tito were just so unique and interesting. And I was wondering what it was like to work on set with them, because I'm assuming this was their first film. Um, just what was it like shooting scenes? Were they nervous at all? Because they didn't appear to be nervous at all. They were so natural and present and interesting and yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that you that you uh, saw that, that it came across like that. Um, I think it's a result of, of lots of work of all of us together. And yeah. um, for many, many months, I was having um, Skype calls with them um, every week. So we, we were working a lot on our friendship and on, on our you know trust towards each other. Yeah. And of course, also on the story, um, I you know, and I visited them in, in in Peru. And when they came to New York, we were already you know since two years in a way quite close. So they they were excited, they were nervous, but they are so so curious and 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 also they are storytellers. You know, even if they are not have not been acting before, they, they have a band together, they like to make music, they are very much into Jeff Buckley, but they, they never left their city before. Right. Um, so so it, it wasn't that, that, that difficult. I think I was just very lucky, you know, that, that we found each other, that this film found Adriano and Marcello. Yeah. I was also wondering with your director of photography or your cinematographer, was it super run and gun? Like, did you guys storyboard and shot list or was it just kind of finding the shots on the day or a mix of both? And um, no, we, we, so the, the cameraman is Burhak Turhan from, uh, from Istanbul, from Turkey. Um, he is a cinematographer I work with for, for many years. It's my, my okay. debut feature film, but in many other projects I shot before, we worked together. Okay. And he was also on board of this project, for, I think, for five years. You know, he, ah. he read so many screenplay versions and we, we, we kind of strolled through New York so many times and spoke about the story, the light, the atmosphere, the energy so much that... Um, that that it, it was it was it was really like we were like you know like, like how Paul and Tito are the twin brothers in front of the camera 
Burak and I, we were somehow the twin brothers behind the camera. Um, and we did we did do a shooting board, um, you know, no drawings, like a shot list. We did a shot yeah. list, no shooting board, a shot list. Um, but then, you know, we, we had to improvise some days, you oh. know, some moments, um, some location, which we suddenly couldn't use anymore. We had to go to another one and improvise. And our concept also very much was to, to allow the chaos of New York to sneak into the picture. We wanted to be, we as a film crew, we wanted to be also a bit of a victim of this incredible energy and, and, and power the city has over you. Um, so it was shot list, but running gun, letting New York on purpose push us. Where, um, just as a follow-up, where a lot of the, like the, the background characters and just the, all the people in the environment and on the streets of New York, were any of those extras or were, the, were those all just real pedestrians? Most of them were real pedestrians. You know, we, we had those signs up like, uh, we are filming here by entering this zone. You, you kind of, you know, you are you allowing us to film you. So all the, you know, 7th Avenue scenes and, and uh, all, the, all the street scenes when they're walking on the street, um, they were all real people. And we tried to kind of not hide the camera, but also not, you know, put down too many lights, not make it too right. obvious. And New York is a good city for it because people are so used for, to filmmaking. They, you know, in many other cities, people are stopping like, hey, what are you filming here? What, what's right. going on? But in New York, people are just like walking past, you know, which is great. <laughs> for us. And wow. maybe one scene where, where you know, there's a scene where uh, um, Paul and Tito are being confronted by a, a, a pack of press journalists Mm -hmm. TV and TV crew is yeah. basically jumping onto other uh, Paul and Tito. Uh, we shot this at the Madison Square Garden, you know, r right in front of the Hotel Pennsylvania. Um, and there we had 30 extras, but then hundreds of people who played along because, you know, people were really thinking that okay. something must have happened. Um, right. There are two, two young boys who are being somehow even harassed by the press. What's going on? And and we were so much under adrenaline there because we also really started to be worried because people became so involved into the scene, strangers. Yeah. Um, so that it's a mix between extras and real people, but mostly like pedestrians on the street. It's amazing. Well, um, you mentioned that this was um, uh, based on a, a novel. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of adapting uh, for film that, especially as your first feature? Yes, um, the the novel is by by Arno Grünberg. He is a, a a Dutch writer who lives in New York since 1995, um, and I, I very much you know adore admire his writing. And when I approached him or his publishing house, if I can, if there is a you know possibility to to uh, get uh, options, um, I, I received the message that I that the, the writer would like to meet me. And I got really nervous. I thought, oh, he, he, I don't know, the great, the great writer, my favorite writer wants to meet me. When he meets me, he will see I'm too young, too, I don't know, not smart enough to turn his, his great novel into a film. But, but you know, we, we, we met, um, we had a coffee and he was so curious about me. He was kind of really like an interviewing me, trying to figure out who, I'm and who I am. And, and then we really started to, to become friends. And, and he was giving me a lot of, me and the writer, Lani, the, the screenwriter, Lani Feltham, he was giving us a lot of freedom. The, the, the moment he decided to, he, he agreed um, and allowed us to adapt his novel, he was interested in the process, but he was giving us the space to transfer his novel into the film we want to do, we want to make. And so this went through different stages. In the beginning, it was more about capturing this bittersweet tone of the novel, because you know it's a, it's you know Miles, as you said, it's a, it's a, it's a tragic story, but it's told in such a poetic and and humorous and and sweet way, and this is what was attracting me, and and it was first about transferring this language of the novel into the screenplay, but then when um, producers came on board and and uh, and uh, the, the production company in Switzerland. Um, and uh, Swiss television, and we got you know additional input. 
and the the and also according to what was happening in the world what was happening in, in the us and and uh, donald trump was elected and 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 then so we started to 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 adapt it more and more and this whole very present um social drama part you know the i don't want to um, i don't know i don't want to spoil too much of the story but there is a very strong social drama element which was not in the novel and we took into the screenplay um to make the film more present wow well i know it's really it's an incredible film that uh Miles and I both love, and I know our audience is really, really going to connect with it. It's the perfect film for Miami. Um, thank you so much again, both of you, for being here today for this Q&A. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you thank so you. much for inviting.